Good afternoon, folks. How you doing today? Well, it's a little better seeing out here than it was last night when I made this clean-out video for this air conditioner. I cleaned out as much as I could get. When I put my hand here, I can feel the air coming through the top here. But the rest of it, I don't really notice all that much. It seems to come out right through this area here. But anyways, it's working great. Good afternoon. Well, I got some good news. Thanks to, uh, I think, two or three of my viewers, and offhand I can't recall the, uh, the names, but uh, two or three fellows have chimed in and told me that the problem is in the rear coil. I'm not sure what they call that now. He told me what it was. Condenser coil, evaporator coil. Anyways, I call it the rear coil, the hot one. That's, fate, that's on the outside of the on back of the air conditioner. Well, anyways, the video that I did last night, if you watched it, if you haven't watched it, please watch it. So then you won't, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. I took the air conditioner all apart and cleaned it as best I could. Of course, the space is only about one inch between the fan and the, and the, the rear coil, the hot coil, I call it, in the back, so I couldn't get my little brush, which is right here, the brush is a little too thick, and uh, it probably they probably use a special brush for that, which I don't have. So I got, I would say, 90, 90 or 95 percent of the dirt out of there, and cleaned up and hosed it out. I did a little more after the video uh, was off camera, and. Um, Drained it good and brought it into the house and uh, ran it on the fan only last night. Uh, today, wife turned it on and she put the AC on 74, which is the temperature we had to keep it on because anything colder than that would cause the compressor to run too long and it would trip the breaker as it reaches 21, 22 amps, it would throw the 20 amp breaker. So, I got, I went out, I come back in, the air conditioner was still running, and it was running on 74 degrees. So, I said, that's a good sign, but it didn't tell me whether or not uh, the um, problem was solved. So, some of some of my viewers had asked me if I had checked the current since then, and I didn't, but I did today, about an hour ago, and I'm going to show you on this video what the current is, how it's working. Now, the air conditioner cord that comes with the air conditioner has a little reset button on it. That cord is made for 15 amps. It's got the 15 amp plug. In other words, your ground pin and your two prongs are this way. A 220 plug would have one this way as well as the ground. Okay? So that plug was running warm when it was drawing 20, 18 to 20 amps, 21 amps. It was running warm. So we had to keep the temperature of the air conditioner set higher, in other words, to 74 degrees, instead of the normal 72 or 73 that we normally keep it on. So that was the only thing that was running warm, is the air conditioner cord itself, because that isn't 12 wire, that's probably 14 gauge because the air conditioner is designed to run on the 15 amp circuit, not a 20 amp. But I have it on a 20 amp dedicated circuit with the proper wiring and everything else. Today, when I ran the current test on it, I had my wife turn it down to 70 degrees, which we never keep it on, except if it's real, real hot, because a mobile home don't have good insulation and they heat up quick. 
So if you ran that for five minutes at 70 degrees, which is the coldest setting that we use, it does go down lower than that, I think, but the colder you turn that, the compressor has to run longer. The longer the compressor runs, the hotter it gets, and the more current it draws. In this case, after the good cleaning, the highest reading I got on that clamp meter now is 12.2 amps. That's as high as it will go, no matter how long that air conditioner runs. It starts out at 11. It starts instantly, so there's no problem with the starting capacity. It climbs a little bit and levels out at about 12 to 12.2, and that's it. But the 12.2, I didn't get to show you on the um, video because the compressor kicked out naturally after running for a while at 70 degrees. So the bottom line is, it's fixed. And I hope this video helps others. Like myself, it's helped me thanks to two or three of my viewers that worked on air conditioners, are familiar with air conditioners, and an air conditioner five years old, one of the, my viewers said, should not need a compressor, it needs a good cleaning. And I, when I heard that, I heard it from one fella, then I heard it from another one. I think it was three guys that said that. I can't remember their names, so I want to thank everybody for their input on this. But they all told me, of these three fellows, they told me that your AC rear coil is blocked. And uh, it needs a good, the whole thing needs a good cleaning. So I cleaned it as best I could with the materials I have to work with. I was very busy yesterday and I started this project late because it's been about three years since I, about two years I would say, that I had to go and retar with roofing cement, uh, blackjack, in the valley between the two sheds. There was no leak but I want to maintain that valley. So I was up there yesterday sweeping off the roof with all kinds of debris and everything and um, making sure there was no damage and there's no damage up there. And where the two roofs come together, there's a valley and I always keep that tarred. I don't wait for something to leak. So I haven't got any problem with any leaks in this, in this shed and I'm not about to have any. So I maintain that. So I cut the grass. After I did that, I cut the lawn because it was a cool day yesterday. Not cold, not real cold. It was probably in the 70s with low humidity, which is my kind of weather. Today it's starting to get uncomfortable. So I wanted to do all these things. So around 7 o'clock last night, I said, you know what? I told the wife I'm going to pull that air conditioner out. And I says, a, a couple of the fellas on YouTube told me it probably needs a good cleaning. One of the fellas said it could be the run capacitor also. But I have no way of testing the run capacitor because the ESR meter I got is not in its case yet. And that's another project. And I don't have a chart which would tell me what the ESR is for a starting capacitor. I am sure that there is an ESR effective series resistance. Um, anyways, I think that's what it's called. Somebody corrected me on that, but anyways. <laughs> uh, so I can't test them. All I can do is just go out and buy another one and put it in. Had I done that and didn't clean it, I would not have solved the problem. So it's working just like it did when we bought it. It's perfect. It's even cooling better and it was cooling good before. So this is an update video that I waited a while to make sure that everything was going to be working properly before I would say it's working. You know, with my luck, I got it fixed. And then whammo, something happens. No, I thought I had it fixed. You know, I always show my successes and my failures. You've seen those in my videos before. So if something fails, I'll put it on YouTube too. So I hope this 
video that I had up there of hosing the AC out helps a lot of you people. If your air conditioner is more than three years old, it probably needs to be taken out and cleaned. Now, it's much harder for like my son's air conditioner is built into the window and I got metal you know those slider things that come with the air conditioner well that's on the inside on the outside I got sheet metal and it's silicone right to the air conditioner case it, you can't get that out without a major job so it's not too easy to clean them out because the whole it doesn't have a sleeve a 5000 BTU comes out as one unit so that's only about a year or so old so that should be pretty good but maintain your air conditioners and thanks to these fellows that told me that the AC was dirty and that's certainly what my problem was I want to thank you and I want to thank everyone else that all the suggestions a matter of fact I had so many comments to answer each one I have to approve even though you've been on my channel before I have to approve you otherwise you don't show up on the video I had to do that because of the troll problem I had. So everybody, all my videos are pending approval. So it takes me an awful long time to go through all those, and sometimes I miss answering them. I had like about, I don't know, about eight or nine of them, and I couldn't edit that video of the uh, cleaning out of the um, air conditioner because I was so busy with the comments. So, um, I managed to upload it this morning. And this one I'll get whenever I get a chance to upload it. But again, this is a thank you video for you fellas that anyone that's offered suggestions on, on this. And I also want to thank all of you for the comment on the uh, shed eating uh, portion of that video of why uh, what's been happening there. I got uh, squirrels, raccoons, chipmunks, uh, boomers whatever we don't get I never heard of that stuff but uh, I guess in Connecticut we don't get that but whatever it is I haven't had any more problems then but I got um, somewhere around I got hornet and wasp spray so I take and I spray up there and that'll soak into the wood and they're not going to want to chew on on that with that stuff on there so I haven't had any problems and I I um after I did that, the next day I sprayed it. I only had brown paint, but it's, it's oil-based uh, aerosol can. And I darkened up the wood. So that way, from the ground, I can tell if they're chewing on it again, I'll see the white area. Because if I didn't cover it, I would not be able to tell if they were chewing on it or it was that way before. So anyways, I want to thank you people for all your suggestions on what it could be I still don't know I haven't caught anything out there um, but then again it's on the back of the shed and in the house I wouldn't hear it anyways All right, that line voltage is pretty good today so let's go measure the current on the uh, circuit breaker panel really should measure the voltage at that point but this give you a rough idea. Okay, here is the uh, 20 amp. It's a 20 amp uh, separate. It's a dual 20 amp breaker. One side isn't being used, and this is the air conditioner. We're going to put a clamp meter on it now. Everything's running cool. So we got a 60 amp main here. There's the main feed right in there, down here. That's the cabling that the electrician put in when we got the mobile home because the park is 60 amps. So. Um, there was a hundred in this mobile home, but the electrician changed it to a uh, a sixty. So um, what we're going to do now is to put the clamp meter on it. The AC, the AC is is just running on fan right now. All right, we're on the two hundred amp scale, and the AC is right here. This wire here. Actually, I should put it over this way so you can see the meter better. I can't get perfectly centered. We're drawing... Um, I don't have my reading glasses.
Well, maybe the air conditioner is on 13 amps. I gotta get my magnifying glass out. I'm terrible, and I can't read that. No, one point. Am I on camera? I can't even see. Yeah. One point, uh, one point three amps. One point three amps right now. All right. So, we're gonna leave that on there. If I can ever get that to stay there. All right, and we'll wait till the air conditioner kicks in. Yeah, 1.3 amps is drawing right now, and that is um, 1.4 uh, is the, is the fan. We not we put it down to 72 degrees. We got it on 72. Now you couldn't run it on 72 before uh, it would go over 21 amps. But the plug on the air conditioner cord, which I can't show you right now because it's behind there. Uh, was getting warm when we had these problems. It's ice cold right now. Uh, the wife is going to turn the air conditioner down to 70 degrees. Okay. All right, she's 11.4, 11.7. She's climbing. Uh, 11.9. I hope you can see that. 11.9. 11.8, 11.7, point seven, eleven point eight. I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. 11.8 amps. And that's what it should be drawing. It should be drawing between 11 and 12, 12 and a half on a 15 amp uh, circuit. And this is on a 20, so. I think we. I think uh, thanks to uh, there's at least two or three fellows that commented and said my air conditioner was dirty, and uh, I figured I'd try that option first. Uh, one of them mentioned the uh, run capacitor, but I don't have a, uh, any t way of testing it. Um, but I guess it's not that. And she's running at 11.9. 11.9. 12 I got one of these lights on my head here that uh, hopefully you can see that that meter I'm moving the uh, I'm moving the camera around so different angles so that you can see that 12 amps and make sure that's 12 and not 100 and it's not 120 amps no, it's 12.0 amps. That is very good. 12 amps. I don't think we've got any problems with that. It all started when we turned the temperature down to 70 degrees. It made it run much longer and run hot. So right now, you can see where it is. Now I'm going to come back on this in a couple minutes. Okay. It got to 12.2 amps, and it just shut off just now, so I wasn't able to get that on the camera. Um, at five minutes running at 70 degrees. So our problem is solved. Everything is cold. Breakers are running cold. Uh, it appears that I don't have to go out and buy a $400 air conditioner and break the bank. So thanks again, folks. I appreciate all my wonderful, dedicated viewers. And the old goat, well, he's cheerful again. Thanks, folks. Have a good day. Did you know that Betty White is older than sliced bread?